Well, boys and girls, I took a big fat L, brother. And if you don't get the lingo, an L stands for lost. So instead of saying lost, the younger generation just says L because it's cooler. Now, today you're going to learn about the car that broke Rich Rebuilds. Everyone sees the videos and wants to build their own Tesla. And Rich, you make it look so easy. Well, let me tell you what happens when things go wrong and get out of control fast. But first, we're going to take a trip down memory lane. Now, a few years ago, I bought a flooded Tesla Model S and spent six months repairing it. That story's made its rounds around the internet, and at this point, whenever someone brings up that story, the whole room just cringes. Well, if you aren't in the loop, after I sold the parts car as well as everything I didn't need anymore, I spent 6500 And no, I didn't calculate my time because it's a hobby, and I don't really factor in hobby time. It's kind of like, you slept with your wife last night, right? That's cool, but how much did you charge her for your valuable time, since you're so important? So what did you think of last night? Last night was so good. Yeah, yeah. You want to throw me like $75 or something? Huh? Like $75 or something? For what? Well, my time is worth money. You're disgusting. No, I'm Rich Rebuilds. Just send me the invoice to my email. Yeah. Let's pretend she didn't have any money to pay the invoice, all right? No worries, because Upstart has recovered. If you're looking for a loan and want to get the funds with a smarter interest rate, they view you as more than just a credit score. They view you for who you are, which is a person that needs to pay Uncle Rich back and help with the black hole its credit card debt. If you're just starting out, this is a good option for you that actually helps you with all you need. You actually get a good, smart, and fast interest rate as they look at your education, job history, and reward you for it. It makes simple, fast, and easy for you to check your rate in a few minutes without affecting your credit score and best part. Well, again, it's fast. Try using my personal link if you want to give it a shot and see why it's ranked number one in this category with over 300 businesses in its trust pilot. Again, head to www.upstart.com slash richrebuilds to see how low your upstart rate is. It only takes a few minutes. Thanks again, Upstart, for sponsoring this episode. But I'll play along. Let's say it took me six months working 10 hours a week. I can't charge dealer rates over 100 bucks an hour. I'll charge, let's just say, 35 bucks an hour. That's 250 hours at 35 bucks an hour, bringing the total to about 16 grand plus 6,500, equaling about 22.7. Now, to some people, say it's not worth it, and they could buy a used one at the time for 50 grand with a warranty. So let's just start this party, shall we? I was riding high and building my first Tesla for cheap and thought I'd build another one. This time, I decided on the Model X, and I found a flood one that I fell in love with. I bid on it, and I won it for $30,000. $30,000. $1,000. That was double the price I paid for my first Model S, and I bought two Model S's for that price in the past. Unfortunately, since then, more and more people have been aware that they can be fixed, and the prices have been steadily rising. So as a recap, I'm going to tell you this episode how not to buy a salvage car. Number one, I got cocky. I should have slowed it down and looked for a better deal on an X, and looking at this list, a lot of the Model X's were selling in the 20s, so I goofed pretty bad. Number two, I fell in love. Never fall in love with anything. Everything is temporary, including life itself. That got kind of dark, I'm sorry. But the key is to not fall in love with the salvage car to the point where you overpay for it. So, well, I bought the car, and the first thing you do is you start tearing it apart. I didn't have the space to work on it, so thankfully my buddy Guz at Argo Cycles had a home for me for the next several months. Now, you have to remove all the seats and carpeting because most likely everything is trash, and when taking apart a car, it takes double the room you originally anticipated because you need room to store all the scrap parts you no longer need. So I had an assistant, Cam, that wanted to learn more about working on salvage cars. He helped me for one video because, unfortunately, someone decided to bring up Cam helping me to YouTube's child labor team. That's right. Apparently, they thought Cam was being held at gunpoint. So needless to say, this is the first and one of the last times you see Cam working on the car. So lesson number three, people suck. So later on, as we removed the seats and all the wet carpeting and found the BCM, which stands for Body Control Module, which, well, didn't look so good. So I did some digging and found some photos of the car underwater, and this is how high the water line was, extremely high. This is lesson number four. Do your homework, because if I had searched better for the car, I would have known it was just too far gone. So I decided anyways to push forward and continue to remove all the junk floor mats, carpeting, and foam noise insulation. Now thinking all the interior components that have to be replaced, one was the BCM, obviously, and the second was a charger, because water in there would suck. So then I went through the pain in the ass process of removing the rear charger, and I learned that you have to get underneath the car as well to remove it. So after I finally got it out, I had to check. As it turns out, there was no water inside the charger. It's actually very well sealed. That took an entire day for really no benefit whatsoever. 
Now in the third episode, I wanted to save a buck and I saw my airbag control module and BCM both needed some attention. So I decided to clean all the corrosion off with the soft bristle toothbrush and leave the rest of the ultrasonic cleaner, pull them out and they looked perfect. Now let's go to the bottom of the car for more potential areas that need attention. Now the drive motor, I had to make sure the drive motor didn't have any water in it. And as soon as I pulled off the rear cover, Yep, cha-ching, there was water in there, all right. So things are really going from bad to worse. Then I jumped over to the battery pack, and there you have it. It couldn't detect any of the modules in the battery pack either, so things are really, really flooded. What's that mean? Well, single-handedly, the largest financial mistake I've made next to the truck. The battery, that's right. The X needed a new battery, so I spent the cash in a battery from another 90D Model X. So keep in mind, the running and driving Model X could have been had somewhere in the 40s for a wrecked running and driving one. So putting that battery pack in the car, it started reading it, which was awesome. Sort of. It turns out the ultrasonic cleaner didn't actually fix the BCM issue, and unless we desoldered the chip off the BCM and put a new one in it, it wasn't going to work. I linked up with Lewis Rossman, but after a while our schedules got so hectic, him with his move and me well with my stuff. So I had to take another measure and ended up finding another motor with a matching key and BCM for again, an insane amount of money. Now, before I hit purchase, here's the interesting part. Any sane individual would have stopped before they had a chance to buy the battery. But no, because this is YouTube and people kept asking me the status of the X, I decided to push forward just for YouTube, just for the people. In case you aren't keeping track, we're at north of a used clean title Tesla Model X. Scary, right? The problem was that I didn't have any leads on performance motors, so I had to put a standard motor in the X. Yes, you heard that right. The car had a performance motor and I actually had to downgrade the motor because there was nothing else available. So not only did I spend several thousand dollars to fix the car, I also spent that money to lose another 10,000 worth of value to the car itself. Lesson number five, know when to escape. If you're a normal person, you realize that spending one more dollar would bring you to the point where you could have purchased a used Tesla Model X, then do it, have a budget, and know when to cut your losses. Now, the only time a salvage rebuild is worth it is if you do the work yourself. For example, I get a lot of emails and questions asking me to rebuild a car for people, which I don't mind, but if you buy a used wreck Tesla for, let's just say, 20 grand, and you're not gonna find one for too much less than that because the value on the parts alone are about at the 20K mark. So the parts you need to fix them are 5K. Let's just say you have someone else skilled labor rate fix it. It adds up pretty quickly. And that's why you rarely see people buy wreck cars and let someone else do all the work. They usually do a portion or the majority of the work themselves, and they might send it out for skilled labor like paint work. So we swapped the smaller motor in the axle along with the battery, and now the new problem is we didn't have the right tool to remove the cables from the junction box onto the car. So I went to Lee's and we got pretty creative on how to solve that problem. It turns out, you don't need Tesla's $250 tool. You literally just twist and pull. Huh. And you're trying to get away through those detents, those four fingers or detents they call them. Okay. So I went under the car, tried it, and it actually worked. That's it. Twist right out. Now that we're actually making progress, it's time to fix all the front fuse boxes. The car had tons of errors, and after removing a few fuses, there was lots of corrosion, so I went ahead and replaced that box as well. So now additional error messages in the dash consisted of a failing air suspension, the car wouldn't raise, and about 200 other things. So surprise, the Model X has a few more modules up front, and we spent another few hours getting to the front fuse box, front body control module, and air suspension module, which live in the same box. Also, that box is not waterproof, not sealed at all, and after opening those, you guessed it, those had to be replaced as well. Then I saw Cam again for the first time in months, you know, after the whole child labor thing, and he got a one wheel. I know, he's supposed to be working. Hey, what the hell, guys? We're supposed to be car. working on this thing. Can you finish this? Cam, I could use your help. It's, it's been a while, Cam. So if you remember in the first episode, I had to manually move the seats with the drill and axle method. So those seats were junk and most people just leave the seats in the sun to dry. But because of all the complicated electronics in the seats, as well as all the airbags, I was better off replacing all the seats once again, adding to the price of the rebuild. Once the seats were in place, we spent the rest of the day putting the carpets back in the car and also replacing the majority of the interior plastics and wood trim. If you remember a while back, while the car was being taken apart, some pieces were, how you say, mishandled. Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, boy. Oh, I found where the clip is, Josh. <laughs> 
cliff is right here. So we decided on refreshing the interior back to new. The old dashboard was Alcantara and kept all the smells when it was underwater. So to get rid of the smell, the entire vehicle interior had to be redone. So to get rid of the smell, we purchased and installed a new interior trim panel set out of another salvage Tesla Model X. I finally got the rear drive motor in. You thought the jankiness was over, huh? Check this out. Again, the table, a single jack, and lots of wood, all in an attempt to get this screw in straight. And realized the calipers were frozen shut. They sat for so long underwater, they seized, they needed to be cleaned and serviced. So instead of spending the time to fix each one, I just replaced the whole set with a known good set. I just happened to have a spare set of calipers from a prior build, so it made things much easier. I also hated the fake black turbines in the car, so since I was working on the brakes anyways, I decided to trade them to a local guy for a set of stock Model X wheels. After that, I spent the next three days removing all the black exterior trim and the peeling tint and gave the car a good detail. And here she is several months later. Uh, this is uh, the culmination of all the work that uh, Stephen and I did. We put the entire back half of the car back together, all the carpeting, all of this was trashed before. This was replaced with, uh, with another Model X interior that I found on eBay. Uh, the leather seats, the, the second row, the first row, that was all done. This interior is pretty much out of a, uh, I think only like a 5,000 mile Model X. Uh, but all of this trim, everything, including the dashboard, has been upgraded to the, uh, to the newer version. So this interior is completely refreshed and updated. Uh, this is what gave me the most problems on the car itself. This was the BCM and the matching key um, that the car came with. And I had to get a new motor, a new BCM, and a new key that all match in order for all to work. Now let's see if this thing actually supercharges. Oh, what do we got? What do we got, baby? What do we got? You thinking about it still? Still thinking? It's taking too long. Oh boy. That's not good. It's not good at all. Hey, it's green, just playing. <laughs> nice. Perfect. All right, let's hop in and see what's going on in there. This has been an absolute nightmare. I mean, the, the car was, when I say not worth it, it was absolutely not worth it. We ended up replacing the seats. We had to replace the entire interior. This footage of Steven and I kind of going through the whole car. We replaced the dashboard, all the trim. We got as one big package. We updated the interior, which is awesome, but it's been a nightmare. You know, we replaced the battery. We replaced the, uh, the drive motor and ended up putting in $7,000 into the car only to lose seven to 14,000 because the motor that I put into it was a standard small rear drive unit instead of the performance one. So it went from being a P90D to just a 90D. This is a good lesson to learn. Everyone that asks, hey, can you fix my car? Can you do this? Can you do that? This is what the end result could be. So when you come and you say, listen, I want you to build a salvage car for me. This is my budget and I want to spend, you know, $40,000. There's a lot of unexpected charges that you don't know about. You know, you might need a battery, then you're screwed like me. If you need a motor, you're screwed like me. Um, it Salvage cars in general aren't worth it unless you're doing the work yourself or you're getting free labor or extraordinarily discounted labor. It's it's really not worth it at all. It's if you if you factor in, hey, I paid 20 grand for this Model X, but I have to pay a body shop at the rate of 75 to 100 dollars an hour to repair it. That adds into the cost of the car. So you have to factor those things in when you're going into one of these projects. There's so many unknowns. If it's a flood, you don't know if you need a new battery. If you get a car at auction, you don't know if the battery's been removed. You don't know if the battery's damaged. There's a lot of things you have to be ready for. So that's one of the major things to having a, a, a salvage vehicle, more so a Tesla. There's a lot of things that you can't really see and touch. Like for example, you know, in a gas or an ice car, you could get in, start it, it runs. Okay, that's awesome. You know, with the Tesla, a lot of the times at auction, it says it runs, but when a Tesla runs, what the hell does that mean? When they say a Tesla runs, meaning you could put the key in the on position that just kind of idles, you could pick a, a dead Tesla out of a field, which is which is what I did, the red one that rolled over, you know, 16 or 17 times. I got that one and that one also ran. 
because when you plug it into 12 volt, the screen turns on, the instrument cluster turns on, but driving is the biggest thing. If you're gonna get a car, make sure it says that it drives, because if it doesn't drive, you're completely screwed. Don't be like me and overpay, overcommit, and not know when to cut your losses. Knowing when to cut your losses is the biggest thing because I would have saved tens of thousands of dollars. You know, you gotta know once you realize that you're in for a battery replacement, you have to figure everything else may come pouring down as well. Unfortunately, when you don't have a parts car because Model X parts cars are harder to find, you have to buy all the parts individually and that makes the price just absolutely skyrocket. If you have to buy a battery outside of a vehicle, that could be 10, 12 to $15,000, a drive motor, everything like that. The the salvage game is, it, it, it burns you. And not a lot of people could actually admit this, but I admit I got burned on this one big time. It completely wasn't worth it. And now I, I'm sitting on something that's, that wasn't worth what it was when I bought it. Because when I first bought it, I paid too much. And now I've dumped all the money into it. It's still not worth it at all. I don't know what to do with this one. That's it. In closing, just take care of yourselves and watch out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And a special shout out to Argo Cycles for letting me use their space for upwards of a year to fix many broken Teslas of mine. Sometimes I get bored and run around the shop to see what they have for sale. And if you're looking for an easy to buy salvage car, head to www.argocycles.com and check out the Viper he has for sale and buy it before I do because I kind of want it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys soon.